Hello and good evening. Hello, hello. Thank you, Table One. Shout out, Table One. Hello, hello, hello. Now, if you could hear my voice, if you could clink your glass. Hello and good evening. My name is Tom Stebbins, and I have the honor to be the MC and auctioneer again for tonight's National Legacy Gala. Yes, indeed. I am excited that the crew invited me back to host this event now for the third year in a row. And I was extra excited when they told me that they were changing the logo to green and blue. Because I said, I have just the jacket for that. It was perfect. Now, this jacket won't be available for the live auction, but we do have lots of wonderful live auctions, wonderful silent auctions. We have a super silent auction item tonight, items tonight, so we hope that you all bid and participate. But tonight, we recognize individuals who have made an outstanding contribution to the American Liver Foundation and the liver community. The funds raised through the National Legacy Gala benefit help support the 100 million Americans affected by liver disease through resources, education, and support services, and help advance our research and our patient advocacy efforts on Capitol Hill. As we often do, we take a moment of silence to recognize those lost to liver disease. And this year, with so much of our world in conflict, let us also acknowledge the lives lost throughout the world as we collectively hope for peace. Thank you. As mentioned, our evening will feature a live auction, jacket not included, a special, unless there's some 42R general, generous gentlemen out there that might be interested, maybe we can make a deal. Our evening will feature a live auction, special patient highlights, and a stunning presentation to our award recipients recognizing their exceptional leadership. To recognize our attendees who are joining us virtually, let us all take a moment to turn and wave to the camera and give a friendly hello to those who could not join us in pers person. Trust me, they are waving back at you right now. Everybody in that camera right there, we have several people who could not make it tonight, especially those affected by the weather in the Southeast. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And now, for your viewing pleasure, we have a short video highlighting the extraordinary work of the American Liver Foundation. Thank you for my liver transplant. Sadie will serve as the national liver champion for Charlotte's first ever liver walk. There are so many people that die on that transplant list every year. We want to do better and we hope that, you know, our advocacy will help with that. The American Liver Foundation, they've been slowly bringing the Liver Life Walk back to Atlanta. They have these all over the country and it's their largest fundraiser. We are walking for everyone that has had to suffer with liver disease. I walk for my daughter who is a survivor, a liver warrior since an infant. We are walking together in unison to end liver disease. We have made a decision. We are funding 10 research awards to advance our understanding of liver function, significantly increasing nationwide public awareness, early diagnosis, and treatment of liver disease. We're on the verge of a great discovery, and it's just a question of applying modern advanced cell biologic techniques and even simple enzyme histochemistry to begin to address this question. 
Today I'm with ALF in Washington, D.C. to lead a crucial congressional briefing on the link between obesity and the disease that took my mom. Molly Dillon will be running with a purpose. I'm running for the American Liver Foundation, um, and he's my inspiration. Molly's dad, Pat Dillon of Milford, received a successful liver transplant in November 2022. I am the luckiest man in the world. I'm Jocelyn, and a liver transplant saved my life. Diet really does matter. Nutrition plays a very key role in preventing liver diseases, as well as improving existing liver conditions. We applaud all the leadership in viral hepatitis because we've seen expansions in both screening for hepatitis B and C and expansion of vaccination recommendations for hepatitis B. So a lot of exciting developments. Taking care of your health is a team effort between you and your medical providers. And there are many ways to get connected with resources like exercise programs, support groups, and even new research trials that you could ask your doctor about. We are proud to partner with the American Liver Foundation to bring you this important webinar that is dedicated to call attention to what was formerly known as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and to convince our audience today as to the gravity of this chronic condition that affects our Latinx populations to a high degree as well as other significant populations. I'm two years and four months out from my transplant and I'm better than I've ever been. And I just hope that I can give hope to another person who goes through something like this to fight because it's worth it. Hello and welcome. Wasn't that an amazing video of the last year of the American Liver Foundation? My name is Lorraine Steele, and I am so proud to be the CEO of the American Liver Foundation. I want to welcome and thank you for joining us for our fourth annual National Legacy Gala. The American Liver Foundation continues to make progress in so many areas. In research, we launched ALS' first ever patient registry for all types of liver disease. This registry will help provide researchers with a better understanding of liver diseases, the impact of current treatments, and how liver diseases affect patients. We also are funding a record number of liver scholars, postdoctoral fellows, and innovative pilot grants. We're proud to have in the audience one of our technology partners. Please stand, Keith Parent of Impyramid, who built our patient registry. This this year, we launched our Caring Connections, a peer-to-peer -peer support program that connects patients and caregivers facing the challenges brought on by liver disease with others who have been facing these same challenges. We also launched our national support groups led by an accomplished social worker who is here today. Please stand, Ami Muth. Our nationwide public health program, Think Liver, Think Life, focuses on screening underserved and at-risk populations for liver disease and providing access to follow-up care. We are proud to share we are screening in 30 states and we have our screening partners with us. Please stand Brock Smith of Fibronostics and Michael Mateague of Eagle Mind Ray. <laughs> Our
Our new Project ECHO program was launched for healthcare providers, bringing treatment and prevention best practices for muscle mash fatty liver. Uh, some of you may know it as fatty liver, but the new names and nomenclature is muscle mash. And this uh, program is focused on non-liver physicians. Last but not least, transplant. The sizzle reel highlighted the importance of transplant with emotional testimonies from Ellen Sellers. Plus, I promise you, you will hear so much more this evening about transplant. Since early this year, we have been working with experts in living liver donation to pursue the creation of a non-directed living liver donor registry. Expect to hear a formal announcement very soon, but I do wish to uh, thank two transplant surgeons, Dr. Ben Samstein, who is here in the back area, Dr. Samstein, and also Dr. Ari Cohen, who have been so instrumental uh, in providing leadership on our non-directed donor registry as well as our working groups. So, so thank you all. So events like the National Legacy Gala make everything you just heard possible. I look forward to reporting back at next year's gala. Tonight we pay tribute to extraordinary leaders in the liver community. I'm honored to acknowledge past honorees who are in attendance today. Dr. Ellen Wolkoff, former honoree, glad to have you here. and also Tom Nilan, and a former CEO of the American Liver Foundation. And of course, you are gonna be hearing all about this year's honorees, the McMahon family, Dr. Scott Friedman, and L. B. Sure. We have former national board members in attendance and viewing remotely. Thank you for your continued support of the liver community. I acknowledge Tom. Uh, Dr. Halal Tobias is with us. Thank you, Dr. Tobias, former board member. And we want to send a special thanks to Michael Kerr, Nick DeRoma, and Susan Stone, who have done so much for the American Liver Foundation over the years. I'd also like to acknowledge a partner of ours for many, many years, the American Association for the Study of Liver Disease, and Matt Duva, CEO, would you please stand? We're grateful for the partnership. I now invite our chairman of the board, Dr. Emmanuel Thomas, to the stage. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the AFL staff, and the National Board of Directors, I thank everyone that's with us tonight. It is so wonderful to be with you in this room tonight, and especially for those joining us from home. Welcome. I would like to take a moment to recognize the volunteers who helped make the vision of the American Liver Foundation possible. Please join me in acknowledging our National Board of Director members I ask all the national board members in the room to stand up and be recognized. Stand up, please.
I would also like to acknowledge the National Medical Visionary Team that's led by Dr. Tamar Taddy, who's here in the audience, and she was the founding member of that group. Thank you, Dr. Taddy, for all your help over the years. We really appreciate it. I would also like to take a moment to recognize all the medical professionals in the room here tonight. Their commitment to public health makes a difference in each of our lives. I ask all the medical professionals in the room to stand up at this time and be acknowledged. Please stand so we can recognize you. Everyone in this room tonight is special to the American Liver Foundation. We're, here all we're all here tonight for a common bond. At your seat now, you will find a bracelet. I ask you to turn on that bracelet so it lights up green and place that bracelet on your wrist. I will now ask everybody in the room five prompts. Please raise your hand and keep it raised once a prompt applies to you. Remember, once you raise your hand, keep it raised. So first, please raise your hand if you're a liver patient. Let's see those hands go up. With the, with the light, let's see it go up. Next. Raise your hand with the light if you're a caregiver of, patient, of a patient with liver disease. Now, I'd like to raise your hand if you are a healthcare professional, a doctor, a nurse, a social worker, administrator, or anyone working on the front lines. Please raise your hand. Keep your hands raised, guys. And lastly, if you're an advocate for the American Liver Foundation and support this organization, please raise your hand. I wish you could all see what I'm seeing right now. The sea of green gives me hope that together we will conquer and create a world without liver disease. It's now my honor to invite fellow national board member Peter Cullen to the stage. Peter's, Peter's going to share an exciting announcement about a courageous lion, Billy the Brave, and this lion has been placed at everybody's table. Peter? Hi, I am so pleased and happy tonight to be able to introduce you to the American Liver Foundation's first original character, Billy the Brave. Uh, I'm Peter Cullen. I'm an ALF board member. I'm also a former television executive with the Walt Disney Company and the Disney Channel. And you can imagine when I was given the opportunity to work on a project like this with the youngest members of our ALF community, something for them, it meant so much to me. Uh, so as we began our ideation for Billy, we really had one primary goal for him. We didn't want him just to be an individual character for an individual story. We wanted him to be a permanent part of the American Liver Foundation. We wanted him to represent in his character the best of ALF. So Billy is brave. He's optimistic. He's empathetic. He's helpful. And the most important part of him is he's a gateway so that kids can know they're part of a community of kids just like themselves. They're part of a pride, they're part of a family, and they're not alone in the journey that they're going through. So that was the primary goal, to make Billy an avatar for the American Liver Foundation as a whole, for the best of the American Liver Foundation. Now the hard part is actually bringing Billy to life. And that's why I have these two here with me. I have Jennifer, who is our writer, and I have Nady, who is our illustrator. 
And they were able to, to, to breathe life into this character. Billy was a character, he needed a story, he needed a personality, and he needed the words so he could communicate what was in his heart into the heart of all those kids with biliary atresia. And that was the responsibility of our writer, Jennifer. So let me have her say a couple words about that. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks to my dad for introducing me. <laughs> it's an honor to be here tonight um, to share a little bit more about Billy. From the moment my dad came to me with this idea for Billy over a year ago now, my goal has been to create a character that reflects the courage that I've witnessed in those fighting liver disease, including my own dad and the young people living with biliary, biliary atresia. Um, when I began writing the story, the first step was to explain biliary atresia in a way that kids and even adults like me who are less science-minded could understand, which was a, a tricky puzzle in your tummy. From there, we focused on how Billy's appearance and personality could mirror the real children with biliary atresia. On the physical side, Billy has golden fur, though it sometimes turns a bit yellow, just like sunshine. His eyes twinkle with curiosity and determination. And even though his paws are a little smaller than his friends, they are still strong and agile and perfect for exploring the world around him. Like all the lions in the story, Billy wears a magical wristband that signifies that he's part of the pride. He also has an embroidered scar on his belly, reminiscent of a Kasai scar, representing the time a doctor tried to solve the puzzle in his tummy. But Billy is not just a lion with biliary atresia. He is adventurous and brave and kind. He spreads positivity and bravery to his friends, especially through his roar of triumph, a powerful roar his pride does to give them courage and rejoice after overcoming challenges. The most special part of the Billy plush is that when a child squeezes his tummy, they'll hear the collective recorded roars of children with biliary atresia and be reminded that they are not alone and that they too can roar just as fiercely. Thank you to the American Liver Foundation for bringing this project to life and to the families and children who have shared their stories and roars with us. Your courage is an inspiration. <laughs> Now I will let our illustrator, Nady, tell you a little bit more about designing Billy's World. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nady Friesen, and I had the wonderful opportunity to illustrate this book and to also design ALF's first original character, Billy the Brave. Um, Billy was created to be a source of hope and courage for children diagnosed with biliary atresia and for their families, offering a sense of comfort and community when it is needed most. As you can see from the design, Billy was meant to be much more than just a character. He's a symbol of optimism, especially in times of uncertainty. Billy is bright and approachable and he has warm colors and soft shapes, which makes him feel welcoming and encouraging, just like a friend that you can rely on. Billy has wide eyes, wide and expressive eyes, and he shows, which shows curiosity and determination. His, and his small stature reminds us that bravery is not just about size, it's about your heart. When a helping hand is needed most, Billy will always be there, showing children and families that they are not alone on their journey. Along with Billy, the environment that surrounds him and the pride is also an important part of the story. The jungle is full of life, has thick greenery and magical landscapes that symbolize the beauty of the journey that Billy and these children face. I wanted the jungle to feel like an adventure something awe-inspiring and filled with wonder while still being supportive and uplifting. Another key, another key element that I incorporated was the use of sunlight. The way that it filters through the trees creates a warm and inviting glow, making the jungle feel like a safe space for exploration. 
The lighting not only highlights the vibrant colors, but it is also a symbol for hope and optimism. Through this design, I aim to create a world that encourages children to embrace their own journeys with bravery and excitement, reminding them that even in the most challenging of times, there's always beauty and strength to be found. Bringing Billy to life has been an amazing experience, and I really hope that he can provide the extra strength and encouragement to those who need it. Billy, re Billy represents more than just bravery. He's about community, inclusion, and showing that when things get difficult, there's always someone by your side. So, so with Billy, we have our own icon. We have our own character. Uh, when I was at Disney, we had a great one in Mickey. But uh, with Billy, we're going to work on evolving him. And next step, along with Julie Kimbrough, who's our fantastic head of marketing, we're going to take Billy Digital going forward from here. And he's going to leap off the pages of the book. And he's going to start moving around outside of the boundaries of his plush and he's going to start appearing on iPads and iPhones as, uh, as a true interactive storybook. So that's the next step for Billy. Uh, and then finally, I mentioned Billy represents the best of the American Liver Foundation. And I think in this room tonight, all of you represent the best of the American Liver Foundation. You are, in a sense, Billy's pride. So when Billy invites children to be a part of the Pride, he's inviting you to be a part of this organization. And in keeping with the character, the way that you do that is with a roar. So what I'd like you to do on the count of three, in your biggest, bravest voices, give your biggest, bravest roar for Billy. One, two, three, roar! <laughs> Thank you all very much. Isn't that amazing? And there's more. <laughs> Thank you, Peter, Jen, and Natty, for bringing Billy the Brave to life and sharing your creative process with us. Now I would like to ask everyone in the room whose life has been impacted by biliary atresia diagnosis to stand. The Puleos, the Frapolis, the Leesmans, the Doors. Uh, the sellers, all of you stand. You all work so hard for the American Liver Foundation. Oh, and, and of course, the McMahons. How could I forget the McMahons, all of you? So I am honored that ALF is embarking on this significant new chapter in our efforts to support families facing one of the most challenging experiences imaginable. When a child is diagnosed with a life-threatening illness like biliary atresia, their world and that of their family can be turned upside down. During these overwhelming times, having the right information and support is crucial. The Billy the Brave Toolkit is designed to be a gift of support for families navigating this daunting journey. Our goal is to ensure that no family feels alone during such a pivotal moment in their lives. The toolkit will provide essential resources, educational materials, and emotional support to empower families with the knowledge they need to make informed decisions. To achieve this goal, we are reaching out to leading pediatric medical centers across the country and have already confirmed partnerships with 11 children's hospitals, with many more to come nationwide. In this endeavor, we are not alone. I would like to acknowledge the company Ibsen that had been involved in getting, bringing Billy to life, 
and also national board member Alan Durr and his family for providing critical funding towards the Billy the Brave toolkit. Alan and John, please stand up. We are so grateful. Together we can make a profound difference in the lives of countless families. Let us stand united in our mission to provide hope and support when it is needed most. Together we are not just creating toolkits. We are building a community of strength and resilience. Thank you. So, the McMahon family is with us this evening as one of our honorees. They know firsthand the experience of receiving a devastating BA diagnosis. At just 13 months, their son Aiden passed away due to BA. Please your, direct your attention to the screen for remarks by Nick Hartcorn and Laura and Mike Tutton introducing the McMahon family, our Spirit of Giving Family Award recipients. McMahon family is a warm, generous, caring, loving family who puts a tireless effort into fundraising for the Liver Foundation. They work 24-7, 365, year-round to make a one-day event, a family event for all those that participate. We uh, first met when we met Joe and his wife because they moved into the development that we moved into. And then it progressively uh, turned into meeting the whole entire family, which pretty much became like an extension of our own family. They're my heart. They're my extended family. They have been there for us. We love them. I can honestly say that if I got a call from any of the McMahons right now, I would have to cut this interview short to go do whatever I had to do to help them out. It would be reciprocated, I'm sure, without a doubt. It's a unconditional love, unconditional support. I could say the McMahon family has really started becoming helpful with the Liver community and the Liver Foundation after the unfortunate passing of their son, Aiden. We were there with all that and they made a situation, how can we help others so they don't have the same situation and give funding. This is not just something that just passed in time. This is something that they live with every day and they wanna make sure that Aiden's remembered and they wanna make sure they get the word out. The McMahon family, in throughout their journey, has taught me that there are a lot of people out there who need help. They bring an awareness that is second to none and that has enlightened everyone within the room. The positive energy brought by the family is exhilarating and contagious. To watch all the brothers, wives, relatives, siblings, and friends work together to make another person's life a better place is inspiring. Wow. First off, I want to thank ALF, Lorraine, and Mary, and David, and everyone for this incredible honor. Uh, 
we are obviously all here tonight because in one way or another we've all been affected by liver disease. Uh, you know, we all go about our lives and we have good things and good lives and children and we, we go day by day and, you know, for Dorothy and I, my wife, we, we had a, a second pregnancy. We already had our son Joseph who was with us healthy, no issues. And uh, back in the day I was the trainer with the New York Islanders in the NHL and I had to plan a C-section around our home opener. And so we did the C-section and we had a normal pregnancy. And within 30 seconds of Aiden being born, we knew we had a problem. And again, I was in the hockey and the sports community. I did not know anything about liver disease. I did not know, let alone, what biliary atresia was. Uh, we were given this news and it was devastating, not only for myself and my wife but for, and my son Joseph, but for my family and friends as well. And uh, we went through the journey. Uh, we needed to do the Kasai procedure, docs, I'm sure you know what that is. That bought us a little bit of time, but ultimately Aiden needed a liver transplant. Uh, and he progressively got worse, and we were pretty much out of time. So I know my brother went and got tested, my sister-in-law got tested, but uh, my wife Dorothy, who happens to be a critical care nurse, uh, said, Joe, I'm gonna get tested, and if I'm a match, I'm, I'm gonna be giving the living donor. Uh, and I said, you know, Dorothy, listen, like, I think Aiden would need you more than me at this point. Let, let me go. But I have to tell you, she put the blinders on, and she was a perfect match. Uh, we had Dr. Iman, who I know has been here, who did the procedure. And uh, it was, other than the day Aiden passed, it was, that was a tough day. Uh, the transplant went, and he started off okay. But unfortunately, a little thereafter, Aiden passed. Uh, he was with us uh, for 13 short months, and he battled. Uh, you know, boy, did he battle. And this changed our family. Uh, obviously, my brother Tommy, my brother Michael, my wife, our friends, our family, they stood by us. And I think in times of, of distress, I mean, listen, it could have affected my marriage. It could have affected so many things, right? But instead, we decided to take it head on and try to help people we don't know, right? I spent 19 years in the NHL, and to use a hockey reference, you know, it's not about the goals at this point in our lives, it's about the assists, right? We're all here to give back so we can find a cure because my brothers and I and our family don't want what happened to me and Dorothy and my Joseph happen to anybody else. And the only way that's gonna happen is through the research and all of the generous donations that we do and get from the events that we do. And our family does a charity golf outing once a year and it's a huge success. We sell out every year and we, we raise a lot of money. And this has now become our mission to give back. So having said that, in the spirit of giving, uh, my brothers and I are happy to say that this year we're gonna be giving ALF $50,000 uh, towards their fund this year. Uh, and we're going to keep this going as long as we can. You know, we're all here, and I do hope that we're all in the spirit of giving with the silent auction and the live auction that we're going to be doing here in a little bit. Uh, I really appreciate everybody coming out and supporting because it's not even just biliary atresia. There's so many other liver diseases. And, you know, just as a quick side note, too, uh, my brother-in-law a few years ago happened to need a liver transplant as well. And my wife's sister courageously donated part of her liver to him as well. I mean, what are the odds of that, of two sisters giving a living donor? It's so brave and incredible. And I will say my brother-in-law is doing very well. Um, so I, I do, I thank ALF for this amazing opportunity. My brothers and I were so honored and touched that we were asked uh, to receive this award tonight. So I thank you from the bottom of our heart. Thank you. I want to reflect 
on something Joe just said, that it's not about the goals, it's about the assists. And we can only achieve our goals with assists from folks like you. So right now, Joe is going to give us an assist by providing our first live auction item. We have four items for you tonight, and I want to make sure that you all are ready, that you have your equipment at the ready. So if you could all grab your paddles right now, each one of your paddles has your name on it right there on the stem. So be sure that you have the paddle with your name on it so that you don't charge your neighbor for one of our incredible items. Now, each one of our items, like I said, we have four items tonight, and Joe himself is gonna help me auction off the first one, but to get us ready, I wanna make sure that you all are ready. So, if everybody could, right now, take your paddle and raise it up in the sky, not just for you, but for ALF and for this incredible cameraman right here so he can get an awesome picture for next year. Excellent, thank you, thank you, thank you. You will all be on the social media promoting this event next year. Now, make sure when you hold up your paddle that the number is facing us so that we can see it. But Joe, you've got our first live auction item tonight, right? I do. Well, going from the emotional stuff to now some fun stuff. But the first item, so like I mentioned earlier, I, I spent 19 years in the NHL with the New York Islanders. So we're in New York City, so I'm assuming there's an Islander fan out there? Where? Which is excellent, but I assume we have some Ranger fans in here. Do we have some Ranger fans? Uh, where are the Ranger fans? Okay. So the first item that I was able to get was an authentic game jersey signed by NHL defenseman Adam Fox, a Norris Trophy winner. He's, he's predicted this year to become the Norris Trophy again. I will tell you one thing, having been in the NHL for as long as I was, this jersey is real. You cannot buy this jersey in a store someplace. This is real as real gets, and I'll show you why. Even underneath, real game jerseys have this strap in it in case the guy gets into a fight. They gotta strap it down to their pants. So this is real as real gets. You cannot get this any place. So Norris Trophy winner. The Rangers are gonna be unfortunately good this year. So I need to open this up and I'm gonna have Tom get it going. There we go. Star defenseman jersey available to you. Official jersey, it's ready and we're gonna start the bidding off at just $500. $500 in support of ALF. Do we have $500 for this? $500 right there for 303, now we're looking for 600. I have 500, I'm looking for 600. This lady is just grabbing the bear, okay. That's okay. 600 there in the back for 324. Do I have 700? 600 to my gentleman in the back. Do I have 700 for this game worn jersey by Norris Award with $700 right there for a 174. Now do we have 800, sir? I love that. No, no, I, ha I have 700. Do I have eight, sir? Seven, eight hundred dollars for three, two, four. Do I have an even thousand? To anybody at all? Anybody here at all? Eight hundred in the back to three, two, four, going once. Eight hundred in the back to three, two, four, going twice. Eight hundred in the back to three, two, four. It's sold! All right, thank you. Congratulations. All right. Our next package is an opportunity for you to stay and play right here in amazing New York City. Now they got me this robe, but it is all tied up. I'm gonna put it on anyway, what do we think? I think that, oh, thank you, Joe. Hey, thank you. All right. 
Don't I look relaxed? Don't I look ready for maybe a cocktail, a nice dinner out? Well, this is available to you because a one-night stay at the Peninsula Hotel in New York. Imagine yourself and a guest basking in the opulence of a one-night stay at the Grand Lux Room. The Grand Lux Room at the Peninsula Hotel. This also includes a whiskey tasting for two in the Flatiron District with tasting classes at the Flatiron Room where you will explore a collection of curated fine whiskeys. Yes, indeed. And then finally, this package ends with an omakase tasting for four at Zuma NYC, savor a culinary masterpiece, omakase experience, where a chef's choice tasting men menu full of fresh and exciting flavors and exquisite wine pairing after your whiskey tasting <laughs> is available to you with this modern twist on one of the highlights of Japanese cuisine. And Tom, I did this, I bought this package last year and Dorothy and I went to Zuma and it was incredible. It, they really waited on us hand and foot. That, that meal was incredible. It if really you have was. never done an omakase experience, it is possibly one of the greatest dining experiences you could have, remarkable. bar none. I don't know why I can't get this robe to wrap around me. <laughs> it's stuck in my sequins. It's more comfortable than it looks, I promise you. <laughs> Joe, I think we start this off at 1600. Are you ready to go? You go. Six I'm gonna do this one. You're doing it. Let's start it off at 1600. Do we have That's 1600 right now for this fabulous New York experience? Whiskey tasting, omakase, and the Grand Lux Room. 1600 right there for 117. Now do we have 17? 17 for 230. Now do we have 18? 17 for 230. Now do we have 117? 1800. Let's go. Do we have 1900? 19 for 349. 349, are you not bidding? 349, don't just play around. This is for real, sir. Are you in? Yes, they're in for 1900. Do we have an even 2000? 1900 for 117 in the front, Tom. We got 117. 117. This young lady is not messing around, y'all. She wants to Oma her Kase big time. Right now, $2,000 is the bid, but I'm looking for $2,200. Do I have $2,200? $2,200 gets you the robe. It gets you the robe. This lady has it for $2,000, but I'm looking for $2,200. She says we're good for $2,000. I don't think so. I have two? I don't think so. $2,000 to 117 going once. 2,000 to 117, going twice. 2,000 to 117, it is so oh, Enjoy Woo! your experience. Thank you so much. In New York. Thank you. And our penultimate package this evening is a Michigan House getaway where we have, I believe we have a special, <laughs> you know, Joe, no offense, but I don't want to mess up my hair. Well. Let's go. Let's oh, up. sorry. No offense uh, taken. He is the honoree. Right. That was. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh, there we go. I'm cool. That That's is fine. called being a good sport, folks. <laughs> Enjoy four nights at the Lakemore Resort property, accompanied by a pontoon boat tour of Artibus Lake for a group of 10, kayaking, paddleboard, renting, rentals, and a wine tasting at two separate wineries in incredible Traverse City. With tastefully designed and furnished home, Lakemore Resort is a perfect destination for families, couples, and groups, all on a lake with 395 acres, which are swimmable from May to October. At Artemis, the fishing is plentiful, the conditions are perfect, and each of the seven houses includes 3,100 square feet, four bedrooms, two sleeping nooks, four full bathrooms. You also will get a guided tour of the Sleeping Bear 
dunes. This is an unbelievable opportunity to escape with your family, to escape with friends, to escape with the girls, to escape to one of the most beautiful and idyllic places in our great country. So this was donated by Connie Denowith, and we are, thank you, Connie. And we are gonna start the bidding off on this at 2,500. You ready to go? You don't want, you're, it's, come on, let's call, I want you to call the first person to bid. Who's gonna give me 2,500? Let's Thank go, 2,500 for 2,500. Now 26, now 27 for 333. Three. Now do we have 28? You're I have 2,700 for 333. Three, three. And now 2,800 for 348. Thank you, 348. Now we're looking for 3,000 and even $3,000. $3,000 right there for 333. 3, three. Now we're looking for 3,500. 333 three, three for $3,000 going once. Three, three, three for three thousand dollars, going twice. Joe, can you toss me the captain's hat? Because I think I'm about to say so. We have three forty-eight oh, in the back. Oh, thirty-five hundred for three four eight. Woo! Let's go. Let's keep it going. Oh, what do we think? Three, three, three. What do we think? Thirty-five hundred for three four eight. Do I have an even four thousand? He's doing math in his head right now. It's four four thousand dollars. There go. we go. Woo! There we go. Do we have forty-five? Four thousand dollars to three 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 going once. Toss me that hat. I think we got it. Four thousand dollars to three 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 going twice. Four thousand dollars to three three three. It is. So That's awesome. Oh, I almost Great got job. It. I almost got it right on his Woo. head, I promise. Very, Love it. very close. All right. Our final package, you donated, correct, Joe? I did donate it, yeah. Well, I think we have Kate here to show you what it is. So the last item that we do have tonight is that when ALF asked me if I could get a few things, you know, through my channels, I was able to secure who I think is the biggest pop culture star on the planet. Would everybody agree that Taylor Swift is the person, right? I mean, this is pretty big. So I was fortunate enough to get her to sign a guitar for us. Uh, it's a real guitar, it's signed, it has the authenticity on it, there's a sticker on it, uh, and I'm sure they have the other paperwork that I gave as well. But this is clearly a unique, extreme, you know, extremely rare thing. How many Swifties are here? All right? Woo! How many have kids that are Swifties? How many have grandkids that are Swifties? All right? So this is a really unique item, and I, I'm really hoping that you guys find it to be as unique as I do. So Tom, take it away. We have a pink guitar and we'll write your name if you know what I'm saying. Swifties get that. We are gonna start the bidding off at just $1,000. $1,000, 1,000 right there now, 1,500. 1,500 right there now, 2,000. 2,000 for 33, now 2,500 for 210. 3,000 for 3,500, 3,500 for 210. Now 4,000. 3,500 for 210, now for 4,000. 3,500 to 310, 310 or 210? 210 going once. 3,500 to 210 going twice. 3,500 to 210, it is sold! Good job, thank Joe, you. Joe, thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody, Joe McMahon, put thank your you, hands everybody. together. All right, before breaking for dinner, I want to recognize our platinum gold and silver sponsors, our gold sponsors, the Bladovic family, the Bladovic family, Madrigal Pharmaceuticals, Northwell Health, our silver sponsors, ASI Pharmaceuticals, and The Intercept. And thank you to all of our sponsors for being an integral part of making this event happen and driving a, making a brighter future for our liver community. I'd like to remind everyone that our silent auction and wine pull are still open. If you have not participated, now would be a good time. And our super silent auction will close at the
the end of dinner. So now is truly your last moment to get it in. It includes a one, we have six items in the Super Silent, a one year membership to the Dormy Network, which includes the most exclusive golf clubs in the United States, an experience of relaxation of a two night stay in Sea Island, and a immersive experience in Charleston, South Carolina, which is a perfect southern getaway, includes a stay at the Emmeline and a four ticket live narrated history tour, and a culinary experience unlike any other, the omakase, which one of our wonderful attendees has already won. One omakase, but we have another in the super silent auction. You can unlock the mysteries of your future with the psychic godfather, and then finally, indulge in a memorable evening with a luxurious stay and two tickets to the American Liver Foundation's Signature Flavors event, a national culinary event unlike any other that will take place on April 30th in Phoenix, Arizona. And this includes a two night stay at the Biltmore Phoenix. If you are having any issues with the GiveSmart platform, Raise your paddle. We have wonderful people like Stephanie who would be more than happy to help you out if you're having any issues. But for right now, we have a stellar lineup when we come back. Enjoy your dinner, bon appetit, and thank you all for coming.
forget that our super silent auction will be closing at the end of dinner. Still six amazing packages in dining, travel, and so much more closing at the end of dinner.
Welcome back, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. If folks could please take your seats. Our program is about to begin. I think we'll do the glass thing again. If you can hear my voice, if you could clink your glass. Thank you. So before we get to the remaining part of our program, and before we get to the moment in which you can give back, I would like to right now announce the winners of our super silent auction. For the stay in golf package, please congratulate Andrea Goldstein. Andrea, shout out. For the Charleston getaway, it goes to Keith Parent. The Omakase experience goes to Arturo Loeza Bonilla. Congratulations, Arturo. And the psychic godfather goes to Constance Denowith. Congratulations, Constance. And you'll have to tell me what happens. All right. I would like to now bring your attention to our 2024 liver champion, Quentin Gauzy. <laughs> Quentin excelled in school, and he dreamed of becoming a doctor since elementary school. Unfortunately, a sudden illness led to the discovery of a rare liver disease Bud Chiari syndrome. And rather than preparing for college, Quinton must instead prepare for a life-saving liver transplant. Please turn your attention to the screen to view Quinton's incredible story. Your son is actively dying. You're getting bits and pieces because the doctors don't have all the answers. Quentin's story is actually very unique. Life can change in one split second, and then your whole entire life is different. The universe could have just been like, you're not going to make it. But, you know, they said, you're going to. Your son is actively dying. You're getting bits and pieces because the doctors don't have all the answers. Quentin's story is actually very unique. Life can change in one split second, and then your whole entire life is different. The universe could have just been like, you're not going to make it. But, you know, they said, you're going to. Quentin was probably my easiest pregnancy. He came um, three weeks early. He was always my easiest, most super overachiever, you know, with school and all of those things for his whole life up until Thanksgiving 2021 when it all changed. That Thanksgiving was a, was a great day. We had, a, we had a lot of friends and family over. I remember just having fun and then going to bed and thinking, I might have eaten too much, but it's whatever. That's why I thought I was nauseous. It was not that. I woke up in the middle of the night that night, and then I was like, I don't feel good. That night, he started to not feel so good. The next day, it was something was up. You know, he was not coming down for breakfast. Mom made brunch. Breakfast in our house is a big deal. Um, he was not coming down. He woke me up every hour because he was vomiting, and it. Um, he was like kind of very loud with it. All I remember from then is just throwing up. And then it, I remember the burning from throwing up so much. Now when it came to Saturday morning, that's when things turned. He had vomited in the Tupperware, and it looked like there was coffee grounds in it. So we immediately knew that is something serious. We need to immediately go to children's hospitals. So we got to CCMC, 
Luckily, we were the first ones in, and they took his vitals, and they got him in a room, and they came in and asked everything that was going on, did a whole lab workup, and so we were just waiting for the labs to come back, and again, they said, um, his levels are a little wonky. They kind of made it like, you know, no worries, just a little wonky. We're gonna have to admit him just to see what's going on, but we need a COVID test before he's admitted to the ICU. And so then I was like, ICU? He said, your son is very sick. Your son's liver levels are higher than I've ever seen. They're off the charts. We don't have a liver team here at Children's. We're gonna have to transport you to Yale. And the doctor said, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And I'm like, yes. And he goes, ma'am, your son is actively dying. He's in liver failure and his kidneys are now failing too. When the doctor said he was actively dying, it's tough to hear. And I saw what it was doing to my wife. <laughs> it was near death because his one year outflow, the blood outflow from the liver is obstructed, it can cause obstruction of the inflow of the blood flowing into the liver. Doctors came in and they said, Quentin has a disease called Bud Chiari. It's a super rare disease. Children don't get it. Bud Chiari syndrome is a disease where it, you have hepatic vein outflow obstruction. Basically the blood draining the liver is obstructed. Your son needs a liver transplant. And I said, okay, there's no cure for it. Basically, if you don't do that, you're not going to live. He has a 3% chance of surviving it. We had to decide very, very quickly, even for us here. We, you know, met consecutive days at the end whether to decide whether we directly list him for transplant or we do a procedure that bypasses that obstruction. That's what we ended up doing. They said, we're gonna perform a TIPS procedure. They go in and they put a little shunt, it's an elbow shaped um, little mesh shunt to bypass all the clots in his liver. With acute liver failure, the stakes are higher. So in the ideal world, if you can stabilize somebody and do transplant at a time where they're stable, you probably will have better outcome. The TIPS procedure, you know, saved his life, but also have a lot of side effects. He has constant nausea every day, varying levels, no medication helps it at all. Over the past two years, his quality of life has really been struggling because when you bypass the liver, you bypass the ability of the liver to take out a substance called ammonia, a toxic substance, and that can result in what we call hepatic encephalopathy. So it affects his concentration, his you know, energy level. The biggest one is the brain fog. That one is my worst enemy. It, it's, it's every day like it. There's days where it, it sort of is like, oh, I feel more cognitive today. I can do more. And like even teachers at school will tell me like, oh, I can tell you're having a good day today. He got his permit to drive. One day he'd go in and have a good day and maybe where his levels were lower and he'd have a great driving experience. And then the next day he'd go drive and it's like Groundhog Day. He like didn't even remember what was going on. So we're like, ah, oh, well, maybe we shouldn't go ahead and get this license. Having a liver condition while going through like teenage years has been absolutely brutal and evil. Obviously at this point, we all believe that the next step would be liver transplantation. I'm very much excited for the transplant. I'm just thinking about what's gonna happen after. I'm just excited for after. I'm like, I should, like, it's, I know the recovery is gonna be, you know, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be difficult, but I've been through difficult. Quentin told me that every morning he wakes up and hopes that today's the day that he gets the call. So that breaks my heart because it's like every day that's what he, that's his biggest wish to do. I want him to, go to college and do amazing things that I know he's gonna do. But yeah, we uh, pray for that call every day. I wanna first thank Matt Feynman and Madison Square Garden Networks 
for creating that incredible video. And I want to thank Quentin and his family for sharing their story. The part that stuck out to me was actively dying. And at one point, Quentin said what was happening was evil. Well, tonight, we have assembled the forces of good. And we are going to save folks like Quentin. So tonight, I would like to invite Quentin and his family to the stage to join the assembled forces of good. Oh! <laughs> wow! I did not realize you guys were right there. Thank you. So our goal tonight is to raise $100,000. Your donation tonight will go to support the programs and the research that have helped kids like Quentin carry on. So when I say a number that matches the number on your heart tonight, on your liver tonight, I hope you can raise your paddle and help support those like Quentin. So like I said, our goal tonight is $100,000. And I am going to ask if there is an absolute hero tonight that can help us hit our goal at $100,000. Is there a total hero that can do $100,000 tonight? Well, I'm hoping that maybe someone can match the generosity of the McMahon family and donate $50,000. I know we had someone last year that gave at 50. Can someone give there again? Perhaps someone can give at 25. Can someone give it 25,000 this evening and be a hero? And I promise you, this room will explode in appreciation for your generosity. 25,000 supports the postdoctoral research fellowship award that has helped young professionals stay in the field of liver research. Can someone give and help one of those people that could provide the cure in the future? Well, Quentin and his family raised nearly $13,000 leading up to this evening. And I am hoping that someone can match that at 10,000. Can someone raise their paddle tonight at $10,000 and match the work that Quentin and his family have done? Can someone raise their paddle at 10,000 tonight? Three. One, one can. Thank you. Three, one, one. Can someone else give it 10,000 this evening? That man is getting dinner. At 5,000, 
It helps cover the cost of ALFs. And he doesn't even care what it's for, because 185 is in. Thank you, 185 and 308. Thank you, 308. And that's $10,000. Can we get two more at 5,000 and make it an even 20? Can someone else give at 5,000 tonight? Well, let me tell you what it supports. It supports the cost of ALF's community education series in which leading medical expert experts answer questions about liver disease. Can someone do 5,000? 382 can. Thank you. 382. And one more gets us to 20. Do we have just one more that can get us to 20 tonight? <coughs> Our next level at 2,500 covers the cost of a booth at a community festival to screen hundreds of people for liver disease, potentially saving hundreds of lives. 351 can do it at 2,500. Thank you, 351. Anyone else at 2,500? 312, thank you, 312. And 260, thank you, 260. And this young lady, 302, thank you, 302. Anyone else at 2500? She's taking the picture of the ceiling. 2500. It is a beautiful ceiling. Everybody just looked up, like, wow, what's going on up there? Can someone else do 2,500? Our next level is $1,000. It helps screen for fibrosis and cirrhosis. And we have 359. Thank you, 359 and 227. Thank you, 227 and 129. Thank you, 129 and 122. Thank you, 122 and 303. Thank you, 303. And 303 is a friendly reminder that if you have already given, you can give again. Anyone else? at $1,000 to help cover the screening of cirrhosis. And three, one, three, two, thank you, one, three, two. Oh, we've got another one, three, four, six, thank you, three, four, six, another thousand. Anyone else at a thousand? I liked that last little sneaky one. All right, our next level, $500, helps create videos on pediatric liver disease to share with patients. And to help me at 500, I have asked Quentin himself to help call the numbers of anybody who gives 500. Quentin, are you ready? Yep. Okay. Okay, all right, we got it. Remember what you have to do, you say the number, you say thank you, and you say the number again, you ready? All right, go to it, let's go. Here you go, here you go. Right there, which one? 118, thank you, 118. 118, <laughs> thank you, 118. There you go. 403, thank you, 403. 296. That's 396. 396. 396. Thank you. 396. We're getting 134. It. Thank you. 134. Right, let's jump it down. Come on. We're doing this. 303. Thank you. 303. 304. Thank you. 304. 307. Thank you. 307. 322. 322. Thank you. 322. There you go. Quentin, everybody, thank you! Amazing, man! Well done. Yeah, we'll get you back up. Anyone else at 500 before I let Quentin go? Quentin, wait, we're gonna have you do one more because I smell it. I am a highly trained professional and there is one more 500 out there. Do you smell it, Quentin? 
Do you smell it? It's out there. It's out there. It is not out there. My spidey senses are, there it is! What's that number? 302, thank you, 302. 302, coming in a second time. Thank you, 302. Oh, we're making a big step up. Quentin, thank you so much. Cheers. Quentin, everybody. All right. Our second to last level is $250. It helps reach 1,000 people with important information about liver cancer risk factors. It is also just the price of a tank of gas. $250. Can someone raise their paddle at 250? 209 can. Thank you, 209 and 124. Thank you, 124. I see what I hear. 317 behind the, the waiter there. Thank you, 317. And 303. Thank you, 303. And 133. Thank you, 133. Anyone else at 250 tonight? 384. Thank you, 384. And the whole McMahons are coming in. 104. Thank you, 104. 105. Thank you, 105. 102. Thank you, 102. 389. Thank you, 389. And 106. Thank you, 106. And 158. Thank you, 158. And 138. Thank you, 138. And thank you all at 250. Anyone else at 250? One zero zero, thank you, one zero zero. And one zero zero, you are a perfect introduction. Oh, three seven eight, thank you, three seven eight. Perfect introduction to our final level tonight. Because we want a hundred percent participation, who can give at a hundred dollars tonight? Way in the back there. Oh, 173, thank you, 173, and 162, thank you, 162, and 172, well, I got you, 172, and 174, thank you, 174, and 187, thank you, 187, and 275, thank you, 275, and 271, thank you, 271, and 340, thank you, 340, and 323, thank you, 323, and 327, thank you, 327, and 326, thank you, 326, and I gotta get around to this side so I can see. 253, thank you, 253, and 249. Thank you, 249, and 220, thank you, 220. And 206, thank you, 206, and 198. Thank you, 198, and 127, thank you, 127, and 125. Thank you, one, two, five. All right. Oh, and 165. Thank you, 165 and 120 coming in again. Thank you, 120. All right. So you all may remember that I like to give a gift to the last person that gives $100. And tonight it is 120. 120. I have a special gift for you. And that is what is known in the business as a giant freaking bottle of wine. And that is because 120 was the last person to give $100 tonight. Unless somebody else would like to be the, oh, 322 gets it. And 322, I'm sorry, but you lost because then 303 came in. And then 303, I'm sorry because then 208 came in, and I'm sorry 208, because then 243 came in, and we just raised another $500 for ALF. And 276 came in. I never thought people would like wine this much at an ALF event, but I'm very excited about it. What was that number, sir? 276 is the last hero of the evening. Oh, but then it's going 394 and 394. I'm so sorry because 400 is now the last hero of the evening. It's going once to 400. Oh, 108, the McMahon's in the front. It's going once to 108. It's going twice to 108. It is sold to one. Zero, eight in the front. Congratulations.
and thank you. All right. Now, earlier in the evening, we shared with you the courageous story of Billy the Brave. You can take your very own Billy home with you tonight by purchasing for just a $100 donation. So if you did not get the wine, you have that option. There are a limited number of Billies available. Only a few remain unclaimed. To secure your Billy of Brave and your book, get out your phone and select Instant Buy. Please pick up your Billy at the end of the auction checkout. But right now, it is my opportunity to introduce you to another amazing story. Please direct your attention to the screen for remarks by Dr. Mina Bansal, introducing Dr. Scott Friedman, our Leadership Award recipient. So I first met Dr. Friedman as a second year GI fellow at UPenn. There's no doubt that there was no one as known in the field as Dr. Friedman. We met at an ASLD meeting and thereafter he essentially became my mentor. I think if you poll people around the world and you say hepatic fibrosis, I'm pretty sure that Dr. Friedman's name would just come out seamlessly and really almost synonymous with understanding liver fibrosis. His contributions dating back to when he was at UCSF with the identification of the hepatic stellate cell as the predominant producer of collagen in the fibrotic and cirrhotic liver were absolutely seminal. And we can see now over the years, he's continued to build on that work and we're now really looking at true antifibrotic therapies. Scott is actually quite a humble individual, and he always loves to share with trainees that when he wrote his first K08 award, the study section said, this guy will never make it in science. And he loves to share that to encourage people not to be discouraged when you get that kind of feedback. And at the same time, he got his R01 score report back and there he became funded. He is the consummate mentor. And I think also, if you think about the number of mentees he's had, we probably in triple digits. Scott always said, family first. And I think that that really is something that you won't hear from many division chiefs, but he always put family first and knew that faculty should as well. And one thing about Dr. Friedman that you can always count on is that he is going to respond to your email within 24 hours. He would have to be in Antarctica to not respond to one of his faculty members or mentees as quickly as he possibly can. We have known each other for almost a quarter of a century. And now as I embark on being the new division chief, essentially him passing his legacy on to me, I'm tremendously honored and I can only hope that I can do it like Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. This is the best birthday party I've ever had. <laughs> Mina, thank you for that wonderful introduction. It really humbles me. I'm proud to accept this Nobel Prize in Medicine announced today. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, wrong speech.
Seriously, I'm deeply honored by this recognition. I'm proud to represent the ALF in its vital mission on behalf of patients and their families with liver disease and in support of research and outreach to families to improve their lives. <clears throat> Lorraine Steele, Kelly Smith, Mary Stanger, and their exceptional team should be congratulated for their leadership in transforming the ALF and helping it to realize its full potential as a force for good. I'm filled with gratitude in so many ways. I'm grateful for having had a career that has brought me joy, challenge, and excitement every single day of my working life, motivating me to reach my potential as a physician, scientist, and human being. I'm grateful to have pursued a life of discovery in science, seeking buried treasure to understand the fundamental mystery of fibrosis inching closer every day to improving patients' lives. I'm grateful for having mentors and colleagues who have always made me better and kept me humble, in particular Monty Bissell, who epitomized teamwork, modesty, and shared success, Barry Kohler, a role model of grace and humanity, and Moshe Oren at the Weizmann Institute in Israel, who together all proved to me that nice guys can finish first. Speaking of the Weizmann Institute, I pray that peace will return to Israel in the Middle East and its neighbors soon on this, the one-year anniversary of one of the darkest days in Jewish history. I'm grateful for the privilege of having trained over 90 exceptionally talented young people in my lab and many more in the clinical setting who have always made me better and trusted me to make a small dent in their universe for the better. I'm grateful for the professional community of hepatologists and other healthcare professionals who are the most collaborative and caring group of providers there are, epitomized by the ALF and the ASLD, the latter of which I was privileged to lead as president in 2009. I'm grateful for the many patients with liver disease and their family who have always reminded me how important our efforts are to understand and treat liver disease and how every second and every day matters. I'm grateful for good health, and I'm reminded always of how illness can hijack the hopes and dreams of loving, good people and families. This is why ALF and organizations like it address a need that could not be more important. And finally, I'm grateful for the lifelong support of family and friends here tonight, and in my life, some of whom are also listening in tonight, especially my loving partner here, Dr. Miriam David, and our family. My mom, who would have been 93 had she not died 21 years ago, would have been bursting with pride had she lived to see this. I realize that this recognition is intended to advance the mission of the American Liver Foundation and the superheroes who support and benefit from it. I think all of us can be grateful for the opportunity to make a difference tonight by your support of ALF, which brings me to a timely joke that hopefully, hopefully encourages you to demonstrate your support and appreciation. So this is how it goes. A New York couple is taking their first trip to the South Pacific. A few hours into the flight, the captain announces, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid we have some bad news. Our engines have ceased functioning, and I'm going to have to land this plane on an uncharted island. A passenger turns to his wife and asks, honey, did we make our annual donations before we left? Oh, no, I forgot, she responded. How about our mortgage payment? Nope, forgot that too. And our taxes? Sorry, didn't pay that either. The husband bursts into laughter. His wife is hysterical. We're going to be stranded on an island. Just what is so funny? The husband replies, don't worry, they'll find us. <laughs> and the ALF will find you. If not, please look for them to support their sacred mission. I want to congratulate my co-awardees for their contributions in support of liver disease research and patient care. And thank you all again for this truly wonderful recognition. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Friedman. Our next honoree, is Al B. Shore, recipient of the Transplant Trailblazer Award. And if I could ask you to please direct your attention to the screen 
to learn more about his experience. Greetings, everyone, greetings. I'm going to try to do this without being emotional. First, let me say how deeply honored and grateful that I am to receive this award from the American Liver Foundation, Lorraine Steele, Kelly Kells, Kelly Smith, Miss Elise, we call a young lady mogul in the back office, and the entire ALF family, I'm truly appreciative. To be recognized as the 2024 Transplant Trailblazer is simply overwhelming, especially looking back at just a little over two years ago while I was fighting for my life. I was in a coma on a ventilator for 38 days. I was intubated, septic, and had multi-system organ failure, and simultaneously undergoing such a massive, life-saving surgery like a transplant, a liver transplant, by Dr. Constance M. Mobley, assisted by Associate Professor of Surgery, Dr. Mark Hobecki. I decided to make a decision to get up and fight, to advocate for all transplant patients around the world. So come one, come all, whether you had a transplant, you require one, or just wish to be on my New Jack team of transplant trailblazer warriors. Let the church say amen. amen. <laughs> all right. Advocating relentlessly and galvanizing the masses who wish to end liver disease just like we all do here in this ballroom. But through it all, I wish to thank my mother, who happens to be watching online. Hi, Mom. I love you. <clears throat> From palliative care in Houston, Texas, and uh, brilli brilliantly battling her own health crisis she never left my side with the fractured vertebrae and other ailments. I guess you can see where I found this will to thrive. Also acknowledging civil rights icon, Reverend Dr. Al Sharpton. I just call him Big Bro, my mentor. And he also happens to serve as our Health Equity and Transplantation Coalition Senior Advisor to the guidance in these new waters, converting I'll Be Sure from the writer singing love song anthems like Night and Day and Secret Garden to civil rights and healthcare equity, go figure. Right? My new career. Or maybe it could be our co-founder, the humble, quiet, Lady Global Communications Guru, Miss Rachel Nordlinger, who's in the audience, who concocted this whole idea 
that if I return from the near-death medical crisis, and I guess she said I'm the self-proclaimed tough guy from Mount Vernon, that I'd get up and immediately she put me to work doing voiceovers with a tracheostomy. So thank you for believing in me. For Reverend Sharpton's HBO documentary uh, and his unmatched journey in civil rights. Or maybe the crazy thought of coming up with this idea that I should pull all of the tubes out of my anatomy and get up and fight for other transplant patients who may not have equal access to quality health care that I did because of their economics or the color of their skin and health care system filled with systemic racism against black, brown, un underprivileged, and underserved communities. And that means people from all walks of life, white, black, brown, yellow, him, her, LGP, LMNOP, PhD. You know, I don't know the, the current poli you know, political correctness, so um, I'll just play it safe because for some reason, at 56 years old, every time I say something, it goes viral. <laughs> it's either on TMZ, the Daily News, New York Post, Hollywood Reporter, which I love them all and I appreciate the coverage. Um, but please cover the healthcare stuff because it's so important that we continue this fight together for health equity and equal access to quality healthcare. Most importantly, thank you to organizations like the American Liver Foundation and the frontline medical professionals here in the room that supported me post-liver successful liver transplant surgery, which all became my lifeline. They were the true catalyst that assisted on this journey that led me here tonight with all of you. All while my music and entertainment career, starting out a company you may know called Uptown Records, which brought you artists like Mary J. Blige and Jodeci and Heavy D and the Boys and stop playing. You already know. Um, or maybe it's my work with my musical heroes like David Bowie and Michael McDonald, Quincy Jones, Rod Stewart, maybe Diana Ross. I have the last duet with Diana Ross. Can you believe it? And I grew up listening to Motown. It brought me the recognition around the world, but it was the health challenges I faced that brought me a new sense of a higher purpose. Being a trailblazer isn't about fame or fortune. It's about walking a path, uncertainly, filled with hope and conviction, knowing that the work we all do will make a difference for those who come after us. Health, to me, is the new wealth. Can everybody say that? Health, to me, is the new wealth. I know people are somewhat superficial out there and they think it's all about the money. What is it, all about the Benjamins? Oh, let me, let me not start that. You know. <laughs> Um, better yet, it's better than any Oscar, Grammy, or American Music Award, or even some good old tacrolimus. Does anybody know what tacrolimus is here? Oh, excuse me, Prograph. Depends on what brand you support. Oh, it tastes so good. <laughs> this winding road, I have traveled sometimes off-road, has made me more responsible. When I was lying in that hospital, I wasn't sure if I'd ever get back up on stage, let alone stand here accepting this phenomenal honor by the American Liver Foundation. But 24 months later, I am filled with gratitude and the energy to keep pushing forward. The massive weight of what this award, this award means is real to me because I understand the responsibility it represents. The road ahead will be difficult, but I am hopeful that we can create a future where liver transplants are available to everyone who is desperately in need of one. Right now, right now more than five, Actually, no, 50,000 people will die each year because they desperately need a liver transplant. Many of them are people like myself, people of African descent, people who come from humble beginnings, people who live their lives, whose lives are shaped by circumstances outside of their control, or 
where the decimal point may be. As someone who's, be, who's been through this fight, I'm standing firm in the gap and committed to helping change the flawed system. We need a national and international approach to liver transplantation that ensures no one is left behind. Kind of like Ohana, right? Ohana means family. And what? No one is left behind. No one watches Disney? <laughs> There's the, uh, the Disney character there. Here we go. Well, in closing, I see many of my friends and associates here in the room. One in particular is a young lady sitting here in the front uh, named Jen Waltz. She's the VP of Cron Technologies, and we've had the most interesting conversations. I expected her to ask me about music, but one of the first things she said, we've, we, she's watched this work that I've been doing over the years in the halls of Congress with Rachel Nordlinger, and she says, how can I be involved? Now, I looked at Ms. Waltz and I said, you're, I did research on you. You're one of the top cybersecurity persons in all of the world. Let the church say amen. So you do all of this stuff. So I said, well, what can we do in partnership? So we had a meeting with the Council on Black Health and we decided that There are some initiatives that I'd never imagine in a lifetime that we'd be talking about. Think about it. I'll be sure creating the most efficient organ donor database for black and brown patients, which also caters to their DNA structure and assures that they are included in the critical research needed in making the overall research legitimate with inclusion for all. I've made health equity my life and my mission. That's why I am proud to serve as the executive chairman of the Health Equity and Transplantation Coalition and serve as the principal lead for the Health Innovation and Equity Initiative at the Council on Black Health. Thank you to Dr. Janice Dias, who's here in, in the audience as well. She's also the dean of schools at uh, John Jay Criminal Justice University. Dr. Melisha Whit Glover, the executive board member who implemented Reimagining Black Health Until We Are Blue in the Face. I added that part though. You know. um, these roles are more than just titles to me, they are a mission. And I've been given a second chance and I'm using it to make others have the same opportunity. Time is the most valuable asset that we can't get back. I want to give also a thank you to someone in the audience, Ms. Renee Mason. You're truly appreciated for assembling the weekly packages of 15 medications I have to take twice a day for myself, in addition to the pain management you provide for my mom. We call her Mom Dukes. Currently in palliative care, like I said, fighting stage four cancer. I love you, Mom. You're my hero. You're my hero. You're my hero. You're my hero. Just thank you for stepping up to the plate. Mr. J.D. Garnier, Merrill Lynch Wealth Management, you've been such a, a blessing to me, waking up and telling me to get my royalties together and do a will. And I was embarrassed at 56 years old and saying, so many people have perished in my sector of artists and, and recording artists, you know, many that you know who passed on and never had their business together. So thank you for the focus, because this is part of that survival. I got it, this liver has to last long enough for to get it finished. I also want to thank my globally recognized attorneys, which you probably all know. Mr. Paul Schindler is here in the building. And of course, Mr. Rod Robert Hantman as well. Ms. Lita Seleski, who is also working with me on my brand new book, Before Coma, After Coma, The Albie Shore Life Story. He's actually the, the author of her current book, which is The Kneeling Man. Her father happened to be a CIA agent who was on site when Dr. King was assassinated. He was the first person to revive him from his eyes. Um, 
as you see, there's a lot going on. And I truly appreciate. But it's because of the American Liver Foundation and the work that they do that I'm able to take on these projects and have the greatest team around me. Um, listen, I don't, know if, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it because I don't want it to go viral, but we even have Homeland Security in the building. <laughs> As you know, Detective Jackson, good to see you. I love the prayers and support that carried me through this journey, and it's what drives me to give back to fight for equity and make sure that every person in need of a transplant has a chance to live. So I just want to say thank you again to Lorraine, my friend. Just thank you for the recognition. I don't do this for accolades or awards. I do this because this is my life. I live this daily. I wake up looking for where my liver is. I'm still trying to find it. I'm grateful for the donor family that I hope to meet one day and say thank you. Just thank you for this incredible honor. And I am deeply grateful to be here and I'm ready to keep blazing the trail as the 2024 Transplant Trailblazer of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, our CEO. Would you say, sing something? Let's, <laughs> this is my new best friend, I just got to tell you. Al, we're going to go places together. Oh, and absolutely. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, Motown, by the way. And this guy was the youngest vice president at Motown, right? Yeah, yeah. Woohoo! Wow. The legendary L.B. Schur doing great things. I'll be in concert soon. I want to read your mind, know your deepest feelings. I want to make it right for you. One more time for Al B. Sure. And one more time for all of our honorees tonight. It is my absolute pleasure to announce that thanks to your generosity, the generosity of our sponsors, throughout this entire evening, we have raised four hundred and twenty two thousand dollars for the American Liver Foundation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.